Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to be with you again. I hope you're enjoying this weekend. Did you all watch the coronation? Yes. Yes. (laughs) It was great, wasn't it? Nothing does it like the Brit. (laughs) And the bit I liked at the beginning particularly was when that little lad came up and looked at the king and said, welcome in the name of the king of kings. That was beautiful, wasn't it? What a great start to the whole thing that was. It just set the tone, didn't it? Because the whole service, in a sense, was about serving, uh, about being a servant, not being served. And we're going to think a bit about that today. We're thinking about the kingdom of God. We're going to use Jesus' illustration of the mustard seed. So we're thinking about seeds. Now, I was told that the children were in this morning, so I thought we'd have a song which would include them. It's an action song. I don't know if you put the actions to it here, but it's Our God is a great big God. So I'm going to say a prayer and then we'll begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you that we can gather in freedom to worship you, to encounter you in the person of the Holy Spirit. So we pray for your blessing upon us. Come by your Spirit. Teach us, strengthen us, fill us with your joy. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You'd like to stand. We'll go through it once. And I'll... Do you do the actions for this? Yes. You do? Right, okay, let me, let me to show you. Our God is to be seated. So we come together to meet God and our opening prayer helps us as we, pre- as we prepare for the rest of this service. So we say this together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ said this, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. 
Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. St. John wrote that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Right, I've got a bit of a fun thing now. That's our verse for today. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, the smallest of all the seeds on earth, but once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants. So, seeds. Go on the next slide, please. See if you can guess what some of these are. What's the top left one first? Banana. Say it again. Yes. Next slide. Hazelnut. Yes. Next slide. Yes. Next slide. Yes. Next slide. Well, yes. Next one. Peanut. Next one. Oh. Yes, that's right. Next one, a bit harder. Yes, well done. Yeah. What's the next one? Walnut. Walnut. Pecan. Pecan, yes. The next one? Nutmeg. Nutmeg. Yes. The next one? Sunflower. <laughs> Next slide. Pumpkin seeds. <laughs> the last one. Sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds. I think that's right, yeah. Yeah, well done. <laughs> seeds then. We're thinking about how seeds from small beginnings have a big impact. The kingdom of God came. Small beginnings, big impact. So we're going to stand now and say the words of the glory on, in your service book. I'll come up there. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Would you like to be seated for our first Bible reading? The 
first reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 to 32. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. This is the word of the Lord. this new kingdom that Jesus bought. We're going to stand and sing hymn number 13 in your books. Number 13, all hail the power of Jesus' name.
children are going to go out of our own gathering. So shall we just pray for them before they go? Father, we just thank you for our young people and we pray for your blessing upon them that as they listen and learn together as teachers and listeners, they may grow together in Christ, know more of him and his love for them day by day. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. If you would like to go out there, why don't the rest of the congregation please be seated. And we'll have our second Bible, our Gospel reading. Our second reading is the parable of the mustard seed, Mark 4, verses 30 to 34. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when it grows, it grows and becomes the largest of all the garden plants with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That first slide again, please. Next one. Small things, big impact. Next one, please. Next one. What do you think they're going to do? What are they? Fireworks, yeah. <laughs> Next one, please. Big impact. Next one, yep, thanks. The next one after that. Small things, what's that going to be? Butterfly. A butterfly, yes. Small things, big impact. Next one, please, one more. Little bricks, what are they going to become? Ah. Houses, large buildings, yeah. Next one, please. Tell you a story. Many years ago, there was a road leading out of a kingdom that had this large boulder on it. Traveller after a traveller walked along this road and they had to scrape round to get by it and they were all complaining and muttering, why doesn't somebody do something about this? Why doesn't somebody move this boulder? Eventually, one man came along and he thought, why is this boulder in the middle of the road? It needs to be moved. And he went and found a large piece of wood and he managed to prise it and lever it off the road so it dropped down into a ditch. But lying on the ground where the boulder had been was a small bag and a note. And he picked the note up and he read it. Next one, please. It said, thank you for being a true servant of the kingdom." Many have passed this way and complained about the state of the problem and spoken of what ought to be done. But you have taken the responsibility upon yourself to serve the kingdom instead. You are the type of citizen we need more in this kingdom. Please accept this bag of gold that traveller after traveller has walked away by simply because they didn't care enough to serve the kingdom. When I heard that story, it struck me because I thought, how often, I wonder, do we miss out on the treasures and the joy of serving the kingdom because we're too busy, because we're too preoccupied, because we don't see what God sometimes puts in front of us. Next slide, please. In this parable, Jesus is teaching his disciples that we are part of something much bigger than just church. In Jesus Christ, we are part of the kingdom of God. 
And we're thinking a lot about kingdoms this weekend and kings. Now I'm sure you've heard this before, but committing your life to Christ is a lot more about committing yourself to your local church. We have a kingdom awaiting small things, big impact. We don't just have a leader, we have a king in Jesus. And the kingdom of God is both a present reality as well as a future expectation. In Jesus, the kingdom of God came into the world. He preached the kingdom of God is at hand. And through faith in him, we become immediately and presently a member of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Next one, please. In, in Colossians, Paul says this, For he, Jesus, rescued us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his Son. Can't get it any clearer than that, can you? So whilst the kingdom is, yes, a present reality, it is growing. It is growing. Just think how the kingdom of God is growing around our world, despite the opposition in so many places. Just think how the kingdom of God is changing things in our world, despite the opposition. So being a follower of Jesus is much, much more than being a member of a church. We're citizens of a new kingdom, the kingdom of God. And we tend to focus on what is temporal. And when we think about our faith, we often think about church in terms of the organisation, its meetings, its gatherings, its programmes. But we need to see with the eyes of faith, if we don't already, that our faith is about much more than just our church. It's about the kingdom of God. And we are all individually citizens of that kingdom, part of the building of God's kingdom. And the United Kingdom now has a, a new king, Charles III, but we're even part of that greater kingdom with a greater king that even he acknowledges is greater than he. Now, a brother in Christ may disappoint you, a sister in Christ may disappoint you or let you down, a church leader may let you down. But there's one thing certain about our Jesus. He's the king that will never, ever falter. He will never disappoint. Our king will never fail us. He's always with us. He's promised us that. So we don't do this on our own because he lives in us. We live, serve in the power of his spirit. I think this must have been tremendously comforting to the disciples at the time because in that, as Jesus assured them, the kingdom of God would grow by supernatural means. And that was great news for the early Christians, surely, because Jesus was going to send them out to preach the kingdom of God. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In other words... The kingdom wasn't going to come as they thought. They thought it was going to be some great, massive intervention of God and their enemies would be thrown out of their lands and they would have that new start completely. They were actually called individually to take part in the kingdom of God. It wasn't going to be like they imagined. It took them a while to discover that. They realised after Pentecost, that they were empowered to build the kingdom of God. Small beginnings, but big impact. Billy Graham was a great evangelist for God. Millions came to faith through his preaching. But I believe those kind of days are over. Perhaps we relied on great people like him too much in the past. Because every one of us, has the potential to be the builders in the kingdom of God. We're all members of the kingdom, gifted by his spirit. 
Next one, please. This isn't about great evangelists. This is just about you and me. Each one of us individually can serve this new kingdom. This parable is the answer to discouragement in sharing our faith. Success is simple, says Jesus. Cast the seed and leave the growth to God. Cast the seed, leave the growth to God. Next one, please. Jesus was telling them that the kingdom of God is going to expand supernaturally. We don't grow the kingdom, God does. We don't grow the kingdom, God does. But our role is to cast the seed. From that point on, it's entirely a God thing. He's the one that causes the seed to grow. He's the one that causes the plant to grow. He's the one who brings the harvest. I wonder if you've ever been discouraged because you tried to share your faith on one occasion it all went pear-shaped. Don't be. Remember this. You don't have to be good at it. You just have to be faithful to do it. God will take all our efforts, poor that they may be, and he will use them to grow the kingdom. This parable had to be an encouragement to the disciples. Think about it. Nearly all the parables that Jesus told were about the kingdom of God, its nature, how it would grow. So this lesson would have brought great comfort to them. Jesus is telling them that not only is the kingdom of God going to supernaturally expand, but it's going to be expand and it's going to become something magnificent, something supernatural, something amazing. And it's true from a human point of view that the kingdom of God seemed to have very humble beginnings. Jesus said, just like from the tiny mustard seed comes a huge tree, so also from humble beginnings would come the magnificent kingdom of God. Can you see the picture he's painting there for us? Whatever our efforts, God is going to do something. The kingdom is un it's unstoppable. It's going to go on growing. It's destined for greatness, not because of us, but because of God. That little seed will produce a great plant. All our small efforts become part of this great outworking of God. Next slide, please. I think Jesus told parables not just to teach about the kingdom of God, but to encourage us with the truths that it's naturally, supernaturally expanding. He will gather his people one day and bring us into the fruition of that eternal, magnificent kingdom. Take your seed and cast it. God has entrusted us, you and me, with the good news of Jesus Christ. You may think, what does one person like me, what difference can I make? You may think you're not clever enough, you've not got enough knowledge, you're too young, you're too old, you're too big, you're too small. But Jesus uses every one of us. We're all potential. We've all got that seed we can sow. Every day, it seems to me, presents opportunities to demonstrate acts of kindness that can lead to conversations. Opportunities to share your testimony. We can all make an enormous difference if we'll just cast the seed and he'll take the word and water it and he will produce the kingdom. Small things, big impact. We may be small, but we can have a big impact through small acts of kindness, words of testimony. Together we grow the kingdom with God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that we are part of your great plan for your world. We 
thank you that we are part of that kingdom of God which never stops growing because you, Lord, are behind it. Help us to sow seed in the weeks that lie ahead. Give us the opportunities and help us to see them that we may share our story with those, Lord, who don't know you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing our third hymn, which is number 590, or maybe it's on there, yeah. Would you like to stand to sing? take your service books or whether it's going to come up yes it's on the screen together we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed we believe in one God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father God from God light from light true God from true God begotten not made of one being with the Father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now please be seated for our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we come before you today and thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We give thanks for Trevor and the word he's brought us today. Please bless him and his wife Elaine. Thank you that millions of people will learn from the Bible today. We ask that you speak powerfully to all and that we have hearts and minds to listen. Help us all to respond to your word and as members of the kingdom of God, may, be, may we be willing to serve each in our different and seemingly small ways. Please, Lord, be with Reverend Lynn and Simon and bring them safely home next week, much refreshed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the coronation yesterday of King Charles III and ask for your blessing upon him. Anoint him with the gifts of your Holy Spirit as he seeks to fulfill his calling amongst us. Strengthen him with, wi with wisdom and justice to serve the people of this land to the honour and glory of your name. And we pray for the other members of our royal family. We ask you to bless Camilla, the Queen Consort, William, Prince of Wales, and his wife and children, and all the other generations of the royal family. Grant to them joy and peace and inspire them by your spirit in their work and service. Ever living God, you bring us together in our households, our families our, and our communities and you teach us to love one another as Christ has loved us. In these days of celebration, support us in the service of our neighbours and in the pursuit of the common good of our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring before you those who are about to take their school and university exams, especially thinking of our young people here in our church family facing GCSE and A-level exams. And we ask you to give them your peace. Grant them the discipline to continue their studies through the coming weeks. Help them bring to mind what they've studied when they write. And we think also of those who invigilate and mark exams. May you give them wisdom and compassion. Be with teachers, parents, family and caregivers as they support the young people both through these exams and with the results. May they show love and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, bless all those who are suffering through illness or other trials. We give thanks for those who work in our hospitals, places of care and in our homes. And we pray for you to give those who care sympathy and skill. We pray that all we know who are suffering in body, mind or spirit may experience your power and be restored to full health. We pray also for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who've died and whose anniversary we recall. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for people of the world featured in the news, the victims of accidents, war, disease, violence, greed, and natural disasters. We pray for hope and we pray for peace, especially in Ukraine and Sudan, and all other countries torn apart by senseless violence. We pray for our fellow Christians in the developing world, those for whom hunger is a daily reality, and for those who feel powerless to change the ways of nature or the ways of nations. We pray that ways of aggression and violence against fellow humans and against God's creation may be renounced and that world leaders may lessen the threat of war and terrorism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, how awesome are your works in all the earth. The beauty and diversity of your creation astound me. Yet I realize that as beautiful as this physical world I can see may be, 
the unseen realm of your kingdom, majesty and might are far greater still. We look forward to the day when they are fully visible to all. And until that time, Heavenly Father, we ask that you guide us through this day and the week ahead with your wisdom and shelter us in the embrace of your kingdom and grace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come now towards our communion, we're going to stand and share the peace. Would you like to stand, please? We're told that Jesus came on that first, East, uh, second Easter day and uh, stood amongst the disciples and said, Peace be with you, my peace I give you. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share with one another a sign of God's peace. to sing now our offertory hymn during which we'll take our offering and its name of all majesty very appropriately. Do you sit for the communion prayer or do you stand? <laughs> Please do what you normally do.
The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he gave thanks. He broke bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Jesus died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
so as we have gathered, we then go out as scattered seeds for the kingdom of God. So we offer ourselves afresh and again to his service as we say these words. Almighty God, thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And before our final hymn, I think there will be some notices. Is that right, David? Well, I would like to thank Trevor so much for coming back to us this morning. It's a real blessing to have you with us. Thank you, Trevor, and Elaine as well. Thank you. This morning, you might have noticed that there are some special flowers and arrangements that have been made. And lots of people are asking, who did that? I can tell you who did it. It was Jill. Jill, where are you? Here you are. Jill, thank you so much. Jill did it without anybody asking her. And by the way, if you'd like to make donations for the flowers in the future, please put them in the offering envelopes and mark them for flowers. Thank you. Um, there's also a notice on the back of church uh, from Rita's family saying how much they appreciated people coming for her funeral recently. So that's on the notice board at the back. Hot pot is available for you to collect. And straight, or well not straight after the service, at one o'clock, we're going to have a barbecue in Andy and Tess's garden. Um, everybody's welcome. And look at the forecast. It's going to be sunny and warm. So please do come. Even if you haven't um, uh, t told Andy or Tess that you're coming, there's plenty of space. So please do come, even if you haven't told them. 26 Hurst Avenue in Bollington. The electoral roll is on the back of church. Please, if you've got any queries, any questions, please ask Kath. Uh, PCC meeting on Tuesday, the 16th, and before that, on the 15th, is the, Par is the Parish Council annual meeting, if anybody wants to go to that. Um, our parochial church council, uh, church meeting, annual church meeting, is on Sunday, the 21st. Please do come for that, um, straight after the morning service. 17th of June, looking ahead for your diaries, Rose Queen. Please make a note of that. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. I've lost my bit of paper, but I think the, it's going to, the hymn will come up on the screen anyway, won't it? Can we just have a closing blessing? So may that peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you today and always. Amen. So we stand to sing our final hymn.
glad to just be seated for a moment. I've got some seeds here for the younger members. Would you like to come and get these? When you plant these and you see your plant growing, remember it's like the kingdom of God. It starts small but it goes to big things. And it, where are the other children? I haven't got as many as I thought there might be. Would you like some seeds? Sunflower seeds. Okay. Anybody else like seeds? I've got the packets here. I don't want to take them all home with me. <laughs> Anybody want some sunflower seeds? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sunflower seeds. Anybody want some sunflower seeds? There you go. There you go. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody on this way? <laughs> so I've got two packets here for anybody. So remember when you plant them, you're looking for growth. And they're going to start very small, and they're going to grow here. Small things, big impact. You and I, small things, big impact. So after this next and final word, we're going to stand to sing the national anthem. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Please stand. God save us. 